Good morning, and welcome back to The Big Wolf Show. Thank you for tuning in, and we have a great show for you planned today. So, it's been a while, you know, because we were just on spring break, and, you know, we're getting back into things. Um, how was your spring break, you know? You know, really, over spring break, I didn't do much but just catch up on my sleep and relax. I hung <laughs> out with family, too, a little bit. Yeah. But that's really it. So, what did you do mm -hmm. on yours? Um, I mean, it wasn't really that interesting. It was just, you know, like you said, relaxing because, you know, school is getting kind of stressful, you know, with Very. finals coming up. I don't even want to think about it. Um, but for most of my spring break, I guess uh, all I did was just relax and then just go to track practice. That's all <laughs> I did. That's all it consisted of. It was like so repetitive every day. But, you know, it's OK. I'm OK with it. Um, but speaking of music. Actually, I don't know if you've heard anything new about like Taylor Swift. Have you heard anything like not new? like big, big, but I know some stuff about her. Well, Taylor Swift has dropped her first re recorded album, 2008's Fearless. It includes six songs from the vault that almost made the album. Swift is in the process of re recording her earlier albums after losing the rights to her master recordings. A music executive acquired the master recordings of her first six albums from her formal label for $300 million nearly two years ago despite her objections. She was 18 when she recorded Fearless, her second studio album. Now at 31, this one is called Fearless, Taylor Swift's version. So what do you think about this um, You know, I really debate? think she should record it because, you know, that was one of her first albums that she recorded. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that album did put her on the map. Yeah, and I feel like it did make her iconic at that point, you know? like one of the most recognized um, artists like Justin Bieber because like, you know, they're still going strong and they've been like, you know, in the music industry for a while now. So, but she's still been relevant, like from the beginning of her yeah. career to now. I feel like she's still re relevant mm -hmm. in the music industry. Which I feel that's probably why her re-recording her albums is going to make her, I guess, more known because people are going to be like, oh, like her dedication, like it'll show because the fact that she's re-recording albums that she recorded before, like that'll just show the dedication. And I really think Taylor can sink her face off. Like I'm not the biggest fan of her. Yeah. But when I was little, I used to listen to her song, and I really did think yeah. she can. I sing. mean, I listened to the Kids Pop version. <laughs> that counts, you know. I don't know if you've seen those the music videos, but I definitely think it's good that she's re-recording them. And you know, kind of sucks that you know the her re label didn't like give her the chance to buy it. Because I did read about it, and because she was they, she wasn't even offered the chance to buy it from them, so that kind of sucks that they couldn't work it out. But you know, I feel like she should do like the remix though of the song. So like, like she would record a song, but then like add like her own little extra spice to it, like yeah. make it more like change it up a little bit. You modern, know, make like it, yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, like 2008 versus two, 2021. You know, yeah. I, I feel, feel like, like it will sell more too. Yeah. Probably because it'd be different. So more people would be like, ooh, I wonder what the newer version would sound like. So I feel like that'd be that'd be cool to see. But I'm, I'm pretty sure she's not going to do not. that. She's but, you know, just do it the maybe same. just an idea, Taylor Swift. So in other news, the iCarly reboot is currently in the making. And there are some surprises in store for fans who grew up watching the Nickelodeon series. Jeanette McCurdy isn't returning as Sam for the iCarly reboot. And Carly Shay has a new BFF. And Freddie Benson is now a stepdad. So, like, how do you feel all about this changes to the show that we used to watch, iCarly? Yeah, I mean, when this show came out, it was probably, like, early, no, early 2000s, kind of around there. Um, so, when I first actually saw the announcement, I actually saw it on Instagram. I was just scrolling, and an old picture of iCarly came up. And I was like, what? What is this? And it was from, like, Nickelodeon, like, Verified. And then it said, get ready for, like, a Carly reboot. And I was like, no, no, this this isn't happening because, you know, the show ended, like, I think four years ago, somewhere around mm -hmm. there. So I didn't really expect them to actually, like, it kind of was surprising. Because, like, I don't know, I feel like it ended well. You know what I mean? And some shows, like... But do you think it would you know. be the same without um, Jeanette playing Sam? Because me, yeah. personally, I don't think it would be really the same. Yeah, because, because her role is so iconic, yeah. you know? And everybody knows her from, you know, as Which the troublemaker. Which I'm she's not coming yeah. Because she was funny to me. I mean, I wasn't a humongous fan of iCarly, mm -hmm. but I did watch it. And I mean, I liked it, Sam. Like, even when she did Sam and Cat, I liked it, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Because she yeah. was feisty. I mean, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I'm also sad because, you know, another person that was all, kind of was the main character, Gibby, he's mm -hmm. also not going to be in it. It'd be cool to see him in the reboot. Hopefully he, like, 
makes like a cameo Why or something. Why both of them don't want to come back though from like where they, like I feel like iCarly really um, made their career their career. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I heard Jenna McCurdy, you know, is taking a break from acting. So maybe we will see her in a reboot just like for like one episode. Maybe not, you know, it just depends. But I definitely feel like the iCarly reboot is going to be really different because they're going to be like adults. So it's going to be more dramatic. So if they it's going to be really different. Did they ever any tea of like how their lives are now? Um, Like in their real lives? No, like from like when they get become in the series. Like when the oh, series have they out. have they talked about the reboot? Yeah. Yeah, actually, Freddie is a stepdad, as you heard, and that's kind of crazy to believe. And then Carly has a new BFF because, you know, she's growing up. And I think it has something to do with her just finding a job so that's why she has an apartment with her new best friend so it's definitely going to be interesting to see i'm kind of excited yeah so have you ever written a film script what if a professional film crew came to town to bring it to life well that was all possible for one senior from john adams high school david saleh brings us the story lights camera take two mark action it's a dream come true for this John Adams senior who won a chance to have his script produced by professional filmmakers. I had the opportunity to speak to the DePaul University Command as he described to me what the film was and how the entire production came about. It actually started as a homework assignment, which is really weird to say. I'm in a film class, IB film, and we had something called the montage uh, sequence. And I wanted something kind of like in the vein of Edgar Wright, where a student breaks into different parts of the school and does stuff you wouldn't expect. And so basically that developed into a script that just wouldn't get made, the assignment got scrapped. And then my teacher was like, hey, there's this really cool screenplay competition happening. And that's when I was like, this might be the right script for that. The co-owner of Pegasus Pictures describes to me what their organization does and how they choose what films to shoot. Well, Pegasus Pictures is a full-scale movie company, and we do full-scale movies all year long. And, well, there's so many great scripts that come from all over the state of Indiana, and it's hard to choose. Uh, but we look for, first of all, the, the script has to meet the requirements of the project. and It has to be manageable, the right length, the right production values that we can pull off. And so Sam did a great job of just like checking all the boxes, and so that was really important. But inside that, it had such an authentic voice. I, I've just been overwhelmed by the support and the enthusiasm from the community and the school. And so hopefully by mid to late summer, we'll have a finished product going and we'll be able to share it with the world. The main important focus of this project, it's just fun. Um, and so it turned into what it is today with the help of a bunch of great people, people working in an industry that I could only dream to go so far as you know they've gone, so. Renegade is gonna be awesome, please watch it. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, I'm not trying to plug anyone, but uh, I am. Pegasus Pictures is amazing and Think Ahead Studios is really cool. Mike James is a great director. Reporting for SBS TV's The Big Whoop, I'm Davis Ali. Wow, that looks really cool. Um, well, here in our studios, we have Sam with us. Thank you for coming to our set. Yeah, hey guys. Hi. <laughs> okay, so from what we just seen, you know, we seen that you were in that making of making your film. So how did the rest of the um, shooting go? Well, um, I was the writer, so I basically got to sit back and kind of watch them, uh, the professionals work on the film, which was insane. Um, hmm. I saw professional equipment being used, professionals who have worked on feature films with actors like Donald Glover, so it's it was really cool to see that happen. Um, by the end, actually, um, since I was shadowing, the director let me take over for the final scene, which oh, was really wow. cool. So I got to direct the final scene, which hmm. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Okay, um, were there any other favorite parts or memorable moments? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, at one point in the short film, uh, the main character, whose name is Thomas Coleman, mm -hmm. wakes up in a rolling chair. He's taped down, he's covered in food, and we got to shoot this really cool shot where the cameraman was actually wearing roller skates, and he had to hold this, like, I don't know, million dollar camera. Oh my god. And just, like, fly down the hallway with the actor and film the whole thing. It was so cool. <laughs> Whoa, that sounds yeah, cool, was... but I could not be trusted with a million dollar camera on roller skates. Like, I couldn't either. I'm not that. even that good at yeah, roller skates. Exactly, I was about to say that. I, I can't even roller skate. <laughs> so but. like when you took over, what was what one thing that you learned that you did not know before? Oh man, uh, I mean, you know, going in I had like, I was already kind of nervous, but I think throughout the shooting, because the, the shoot was over three days, um, I had this confidence going in 
when he said you could take over, I was like, you know, I'm gonna knock it out of the park. But yeah. <laughs> when we were ready to roll, and I and I said cut, the strangest thing happened. Everyone just kind of turned and looked at me. I'm used to everyone looking at someone else. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they were all staring at me, ready for the next direction. And I That's was just cute. like, okay. I took a deep breath, and then we went right into it. And from there, I don't know. It felt supernatural. Um, directing was so fun because you have to talk to a million different people yeah. but you also have to know exactly what you want so um, it was a lot of fun wow that seems really like it's good experience to you know especially if you want to pursue something in the film side like it's good to be interacting with people and like behind being behind the camera giving the actions and all that sure. um and speaking of you know film and like support system and stuff like that um, how has your family supported you throughout all of this, particularly your mom? Oh my God. Um, my mom has been my biggest supporter from day one. Um, not only is she the one that pushes me every day to work harder, um, not That's just good. for myself, but yeah. yeah, for my dreams, it's, she's always been there. And especially with this project, you know, she was essentially she felt like a producer on the project because <laughs> I mean she was making phone calls she was it's like the getting food wow oh yeah God, I was about yeah. to say you should she, contact her as your manager yeah for, for sure. sure she was yeah. amazing yeah she was I've never seen her be so stressed out yeah. at one point um but like it, it was just so crazy to see her running around doing stuff in film along with me it oh. was like it was it was bizarre but she's yeah. awesome what do you say she was more excited than you um, at some points, I think she was more visibly excited. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely, I'm not great at like being super over dramatic and over the top, but yeah. she is. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, she, she's great. I feel yeah. like if you have that one support system, it can make you go a long way. Oh, Especially yeah. when it's your mom or your dad or yeah. somebody yeah. really close. Close. For that sure. would make you want to strive more to do it. Exactly. So after you graduate from high school, what's your plan? So I'm going to be attending DePaul University in Chicago. Uh, I'm going to be entering their film program with a concentration in directing. Um, yeah, I only really got into film about two, two years ago. Uh, originally, I wanted to pursue something. It was either way, it was going to be in the arts, whether that be drawing, writing, acting, something. Um, but I managed to get a scholarship to enter this film program oh. in L.A., Oh, that's so yeah. cool. That's a big, wow. Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> yeah. I got to act in front of the camera. And, you know, acting is great. I think that people who act are extremely talented. Yes. But there was something always pulling me behind the camera. I, I really wanted to check out, you know, what's going on, what goes into a script, what goes into, uh, you know, storyboards, what goes into actually mm -hmm. filming. Um, it's just this really cool dynamic. So um, going forward, film is definitely what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. When did you, like, think you most were, like, you know, gravitated, I guess, towards film? Like So I think um, overall, I always point it back to one movie that really made my childhood, and that was Jurassic Park. You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That has awesome, good directing yeah. skills, to be honest. Oh, my yeah, God, yeah. Original. Steven Spielberg, I mean, he's, you know, always at the top. Um, but the, the thing about Jurassic Park, you know, there's this kind of escape from our world, and I think that's something I really like yeah. about film. Um, and I've always been a pretty creative person, I would say. Uh, and so writing stories to me is is really impressive. So mm. I like kind of getting out of this world. Yeah, okay, definitely so creative Okay, so not to go backtrack, but when can we see your film come out? So right now, the film is in the editing bay. Um, it's being edited by Think Ahead Studios. Um, and we're looking, I'm pretty sure they said about a month to three months. So either way, it's probably going to be in the summer. Okay. Um, we're going to see submissions into film festivals, which is pretty cool. Ooh. And screenings wow. in theaters um, oh. will be pretty cool. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. One in Bloomington and one here. So that hmm. should be pretty fun. Wow. I'm going to have to go see it. Yeah. Because I would that, be I'm so excited. excited. Yeah. yeah. When we saw the story, we were like, wow, like this looks like a really good, um, you know, film. Um, we know that you, um, I think you, you wrote it in your junior year. Yeah. How did you, how did you come up with that? Or like, how did that happen? So actually, funnily enough, it started off as a homework assignment, which mm -hmm. I, we were going to do this, uh, basically it was called the, the montage sequence. Um, that way we can get some, some practice using the camera, making a montage. And so it was this idea about thinking about what I can work with. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I'm filming in school. What can I do during my school periods? And I thought it would be really fun to do something in the vein of, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, something John Hughes-esque with some Edgar Wright editing. I thought it would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that's how we got the first draft for Renegade. Um, Basically, it's this idea that a student decides to sneak into different parts of the school, um, maybe go a little bit too far in some instances. But Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, what I always wanted was going to be these same beats. A perfect student goes bad and ends up in the principal's office. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, that's that's the original story, and that's the same idea, the same theme that's continued throughout the whole thing. Um, but the script has gone through multiple, multiple revisions. Mm-hmm. Um, the guys at Pegasus Pictures uh, had me go through multiple revisions, and they taught me how to write not, not only a better story, but something with more connective tissue. So. Mm. That okay, makes sense. and that was really nice. Uh, well, to wrap up, um, how would you say um, who you are as a person affects the films that you plan on making in the future? For sure. So I'm actually an immigrant. Um, I came from Chile. I moved here with my family when I was about two months old. Um, and being Latino is a huge part of my identity, and I want yeah. that to reflect in my filmmaking. So going forward, you know, I always go back to this moment where I saw Pedro Pascal on screen for the first time, and that was really cool because he's from Chile. Wow. Um, there yeah. is a lot of like famous Ch- Chileans and on TV and you know news everywhere, to be honest. Wait, wait, where is Chile? So it's right next to Argentina. It's in South America. Okay. It's um, the long, skinny one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the long, it's really skinny cool. one. Wait, it's yeah. like this. Well, the cool thing about Chile is that, like, you know, if you. <laughs> The, the farther up north you go, the hotter it gets, and the farther down south you go, it get, it's a lot colder. So you what? have like this, yeah, because you get closer. Um, you know, when you go down south, you see penguins, but when you go up north, you see like foxes and stuff. It's really Whoa. cool. Have you seen penguins? Yeah, so actually, I went on this really cool trip with my family. Um, mm-hmm. We were able to get like kind of a little boat tour. We saw sea otters. It was really cool. Whoa. The wildlife there is out yeah. of this world. So do they really look like the way they look on like TV? Yeah, we actually, I saw, you know, those, uh, what are they called? The Rockefeller penguins with like the little spikes out. It was really uh-huh. cool. Yeah, those things were pretty cool. But um, yeah, no, being from Chile, I think, you know, you ask people to name directors who are Latino. Yeah. And I mean, right off the top of my head, I only think of three. And that's Guillermo del Toro, Alfonso Cuaron, and Robert Rodriguez. But, you know, if you ask someone to name a white director, the list, it seems endless. So many, yeah. yeah. So... My goal in filming is to create a beacon for Latin filmmakers. I want to be a Latin filmmaker myself. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just want to throw my ring in there and uh, I want to show people what it means to be Chilean. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's great that goal. you decide to include that into your films. I I didn't think about that, but that sounds like really good, you know, to the Latino community, especially, yeah. you know, more including um for like filming and like different parts of media. So I think that's really cool that that's your passion and your drive for filming. I feel like you have a good long term goal. I feel like you will achieve it. Yeah, so exactly. Like it's really specific. You and look you like you're, you're getting your out. stuff down, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks guys, really appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us um, on our show, you know, coming to our studio. And thank you for watching and listening to what he had to say. Um, and make sure you tune into our radio show on, at 91.7 FM. The Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah.